Greetings, ladies and men and gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales from Outer Space, where I take stories from across the internet and read them for your entertainment. This particular story is called Darwin Station Tour, written by Echoing Cascade. The journalist named My O'Neill was tall, beautiful, red-haired, and angry. If one more arsehole makes the wrong month's joke, they're not getting sent to sentient resources for harassment. I'm getting sent to prison for murder. She had been chosen to do a scoop on Darwin Station, thanks to her background in physics. The station was normally closed to visitors for reasons of safety, and as she made her way through the corridors of the station, she began to realize it was for the safety of the potential visitors. I'm pretty sure the Singularity Forge shouldn't be used to cook instant noodles. Sorry, the purple-skinned Horuius was getting flustered by his assignment. He was to show the reporter around the station, and things had started off on the wrong foot. Why did she have to get so angry when presented with the yellow jumpsuit that she would have to wear? And what the hell is a turtle or a ninja? Zari was deemed to be one of the more sane members of the research team by virtue of being the newest member, and as he finally made it to the Hall of Inventions, he let out a breath he did not know he'd been holding. This is it for me. Now Kari takes over. Sari had done what he could to gloss over the multiple infractions to the safety code and common sense laws by telling Miss O'Neill that there is a thin line between genius and insanity. Meant to work here, you don't have to blur it, but it certainly helps. She nodded and seemed to agree. Sari shook the human woman's hand and left the room as fast as it was decent to do so. Good luck, Kari. Sari wished he these fellow Haruius. My was getting bored. She'd been shown inventions each more useless than the next. Ice cream that only melts in the presence of saliva. Chewing gum that doesn't lose its flavor. I'm pretty sure I signed up to a research institute, not found the golden ticket to Willy Wonka's factory. She was half listening to Kari's explanations when something caught her interest. Kari. Self-applying paint, rubber ducky with perpetual engine, smell-capable television. Mai quickly stopped the talking Harurius. Uh, wait, uh... What was that last one? Oh, uh, it's a television that... No, 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 the one about perpetual engine. Kari motioned for the aquarium where a rubber ducky was swimming in circles thanks to a small propeller. A researcher made it a few years ago. All it does is swim at a fixed pace. Mai had her hands on the glass and looked at the ducky like it was the Holy Grail. All it does? Are you insane? This is revolutionary. How does it work? Are you familiar? With the laws of thermodynamics? Yes. The ducky is not. Mai was about to question the mental capacity of whomever spoke when she realized it wasn't a voice she recognized and turned around to look at the speaker. Who said that? She saw no one. Ah, don't bother looking for him. That was Gary. He's kind of shy with newcomers. Okay, uh, what is he though? That was one sexy voice. She blushed as she caught what she had just said. Kari couldn't help but laugh, only adding to embarrassment. Ah, I'm sorry. It's just that technically you're flirting with the... <laughs> Never mind. As for how the ducky works, we don't know. Mai ready quickly. How can you not know? Kari scratched the back of his head and gesture learned from a long time spent with humans. Well, the scientist who made it also created the bubble of unreality. Put it in a shoebox and uh, then he broke rule one. What is rule one? Everyone in the room who had up to that point remained silent spoke as one. Do not the cat. Kari nodded. Kari, the scientist put a cat inside the box, recreating Schrodinger. What happened? Lights went out. Someone said, seriously? And he was never seen again. Kari made a mental note to make sure not to show the report to the Darwin Awards room, where pissed off death is under the scientist's picture. Mai looked horrified. Does that happen a lot? No, no, well, uh, define a lot. Kari ended the sentence by marking air quotes. Mai had heard enough and was ready to leave. Well, I think I have all I needed. Thank you for your hospitality. Mai started walking away. One of our scientists is about to put a finishing touches on the four-dimensional Rubik's Cube. Are you sure you don't want to check it out? Mai started to walk faster. No, thanks, bye. Kari crossed his arms, looking slightly hurt. It would not have worked anyway. Kari didn't even bother to fake surprise. Why not? 
Because I like David. He's a good person. Kari nodded and returned to his lab. End of story. Story number two. Humans Reincarnate, written by Random3x. Alan looked at the offered food tray from the dispensary and looked over the canteen to find free space. It was the lunch hour, so there were very few free spots. Over here, human Alan, Clonk shouted, standing up and waiting while nearly toppling the table in the effort. Heading over to the table across the room, Alan settled into the free spot Clonk had saved for him. Putting the tray down, he settled in for what he could already tell would be an interesting lunch. Less because of the bland food paste and more because of the company. The lot arrayed at the table always got into discussions about all manner of things. Looking at Klonk, the giant ball of muscle that he was, Alan slid the dessert to him as a thank you for saving him a spot. So, uh, what is today's subject? Well, human Alan, the subject was Plinko's hatching brood. Dust replied, sipping on the fruit juice pack. Alan's eyes widened in surprise. You got kids? In all of their discussions about family, Plinko had never once mentioned having children, let alone a mate. Yes, but only very recently. My brood partner was pleased to birth many healthy children. Plinko let a goofy grin spread across his face as he showed Alan a picture of the mother holding half a dozen children, all giving a peace sign to the camera. I taught them that gesture you taught me. They are so clever they can already calculate the planet's gravitational effect on FTL travel. Alan sagely nodded. Plinko's race was one of the smartest in the universe. Most, if not all, of their race could match a fully educated adult human by the age of three. No, uh, Glontath. Plinko paused to flick through dozens of photos till he found one that was solely showed a child in question. Asked me, Daddy, what happens after we die? Oh boy, Alan let out a whistle. Not an easy question to answer. No, it is simple. All physical functions cease and we begin to decay. But he then asked me, where do our minds go? I'll be honest, that one has less research on it. It's obvious, is it not? We move on to the Great Nebula, Dost declared, thumping a claw against the table. Is that so? Plinko asked. My race believes we go to a paradise, Clonk added, as he struggled to get the lid of the dessert pot off. What about you, Hugh and Alan? Plinko asked. I understand your race has many ideas of the nature of what happens. Alan failed to restrain a chuckle from the observation. Far too many ideas. Some cultures believed like Clunk. We went to a paradise. Others believed that bad people would go to a place for eternal punishment. Some even thought that you had to die fighting to get a good place. Clunk looked up, having finally won his battle with the lead. Seems nice. Personally, I subscribe to the idea of reincarnation. Plinko tilted his head in confusion. Rary in, uh... I'm sorry, Q and Alan, I am unfamiliar with the term. It means when we die, our souls are reborn, and we live another life. And you retain memories? No wonder why humans are so crafty as they are. No, no, Plinko. The general rule is you don't keep your memories. Each life is like a fresh start, though there are a few examples of people claiming to have memories of past lives. How intriguing! Some cultures believe that you can even become different species. That depending on the life you lived, you can become better or worse on the scale. So by that logic, I might have been a human at some point, Dost asked. Possible. The ultimate goal for many of these faiths is to find a way to escape the reincarnation cycle. But that is a whole other point. But personally, I think when we die, I will start anew. I shall try to relay this to my brood. They've been looking for something to write a thesis on for kindergarten. End of story. I'd quickly like to thank the T5 channel members and patrons. Cam Maxwell, Gaspar Arnholtz, Bushmaster177, Lord Azrakal, Ambrose Cattell, Quantum Wednesday, Drugzoon, WRE, and Blueberry Cat. Thank you very much for the support. It is super appreciated.